Hey everybody, this is Steve. I'm with FR Sky in North America, and I'm going to take you through a presentation I normally do for people who are seeing this transfer for the first time or trying to give them a basic understanding of how it works. This is a fictitious FR Sky X20S. It's a tandem transmitter, and uh, what I've got set up on here is a Tundra, which is a real plane sold by Hobby King. It's a bush plane, and I already have it set up so I can save you time going through the entire process. Now, um, what I do first of all is I hit this, which is the same as hitting this. So you, pr you press either one. This is a, a big like mechanical switch, not mechanical switch, but you know it's something that's this ring. You press it in as opposed to touching the screen here, um, and this is how you set up a model. A lot of times people try to do it from the edit model, which is wrong. You want to go through it in under model select. You can see I already have two planes set up. I've got a Bixler 2, also from Hobby King, and the Tundra. You know, I'm not making flex innovation kind of money yet. So, um, let's, uh, the, I left the Hobby King planes. Anyway, let me show you how I set the Tundra up. All I did is I used this wizard by hitting that plus button. I select airplane and though I can have up to four motors on there I'm just going to use one motor which is one channel uh, two channels for ailerons I do have two channels for the flaps I have a traditional tail if I select no tail it would assume that I have a flying wing and do elevon mixing and okay so that's your traditional tail everything looks good i give it a name select a photo unfortunately i can't select a photo on here or have sounds uh, i've not figured that part out yet but it's not a big deal anyways what is important is that i back out of this and i go back to models and i still you can see i'm still on tundra so if i go back into model and select mixer you would see all of this. This wouldn't be down here, and this wouldn't be here either, but it would be AETR, ailerons, elevator, throttle, rudder, and flaps, and without any channels associated with it. And the reason I show that is to you is because all that thinking, all the mixing that had to happen is already done for you in the, in the model setup wizard. So we're pretty happy with that. Um, unfortunately, when I move the sticks, nothing happens. That's because there's no receiver associated with this model. So even though you own a receiver, um, you might not have it working. And uh, typically, this is the screen. I mean, I'll make it real simple here. So you got the owner registration ID. Um, usually, by the time you've watched this, you've already set up a few receivers. So just stick with whatever you have up there. It's not going to make that much of a difference. If it's, you're setting this up ahead of time, you can change that to whatever you want it to be. I just call it Steve S19. And this is like the virtual brand process, like how you brand a cow, except that it's not permanent. Um, so this is the passphrase that gets shared from the transmitter to the receiver. Um, if I were to set up an external module, it means that I would have something hanging off the light bay in the back of the transmitter, and I can use any of these different light protocols. So Twin Light Pro, which is new, the R9 Light Pro Access, uh, or I should say R9M Light Pro Access, and R9 Light Access, and R9M Light, and XJT light and man, we've got a lot of different things there. So, um, but we're not going to be using external modules. We are going to be using the internal module. I've already got set up to a tandem receiver, which means that you'll see that both 2.4 and gigahertz and 900 megahertz are both blocked out. It's because both of them are turned on at the same time. What I do have control over is if I'm using internal or external antennas, and unless you have external antennas on your transmitter, and you know what you're doing, do not touch this because you will fry your transmit module if you try playing with that. 
All right, so I I think the default on this was 10 milliwatts, and I usually tell people to go to 100 milliwatts. The other thing is, is that there's this big registration button right here. So what you do is you hit the register button, and as you do that, you plug in your receiver by holding down what used to be called the bind button. It's now called the register button. And all of a sudden, um, you'll see the receiver fire up. It will say TDR18 on the screen. And so essentially what it's saying is I'm a TDR18 to the transmitter. The transmitter says, nice to meet you, TDR18. The pass phrase is Steve S19. The receiver says, I'm going to brand that on my butt and I'm good to go. But I mean, at some point in the future, I can change to something else if I wanted to. But for now, I'm registered to you. And the transmitter said, great meeting you, TDR18. I'll catch you later. So we hit OK twice and you get out of it. And your control surfaces still don't work. And you're kind of wondering what I'd go through all that for if nothing's working. Well, hang on a second here. Everything's going to be fine. All you have to do is you have to hit the bind button. And it's simple as plugging that receiver back in. That receiver will say, hello, remember me? I'm the TDR18. And the transmitter will go, oh, yeah, I remember you. You're the TDR18. Um, you have the Steve S19 branded on your butt. Um, why don't uh, you, you want to be associated with this Tundra plane? And the TDR18 said, yeah, that sounds like a cool thing. Let's do that. Hit OK twice, and then all of a sudden, all your control surfaces start to move. Uh, the only other thing I would do is I would make sure I would set a fail safe right here. And if you can't think of anything else, you can set it to hold. If you're working with a flight controller, you set it to no pulses. Okay, so that's all there is as far as the transmitter. Now, the outputs, um, what I usually happens is all my control surfaces go the wrong direction, or some do, or I, I can almost always guarantee that the left aileron is going the wrong direction. And so what I do is I start moving the right stick, especially the left one, and I'm like, well, cool, the left aileron is moving uh, on channel one, but it's going the wrong direction. I bet you if I click on it and hit invert, all of a sudden that splits, and I'm not, that control surface is working right. Let's check the right one. Okay, the right other one's going the right direction. Rudder. Okay, the rudder needs to be inverted as well. Let's do that. Oh, that's working now. And, you know, everything, you can check it all out, make sure all the control surfaces are going the right direction. It only takes a minute or so to get them all set up right. Then you're completely happy. But, you know, you can go out flying right now. I mean... Heck, it's just, I've taken many planes out in this condition, but I want to refine this plane a little bit more and kind of talk about a few different things here. So we'll go through some different channels here. Um, ailerons, we always talk about dual rates, so I'm going into edit really quick. Uh, I've set this up already, so you'll see that I've got a SA switch for both, they call them rates or weights, depending what where you came from one of these vernacular is right and then the curve we set up an exco curve so when i have switch a all the way up it does nothing it's essentially you get no curve and 100 percent weight so he has full travel of the servos on the ailerons now if i were to move it to sa middle then i get 30 percent expo and you want this to be a positive number because i did it with negative numbers Oh my god, the plane fly horribly. I mean, I could barely control it. it what you're supposed to do is it's supposed to dent in the center. What this does, if you give it negative numbers, it gives it more spastic tendencies in the center instead of less. So when I switched that to positive 30, everything was great. Positive 50, even better. Or depends. Sometimes it's too much. The travel, I went from the 100% to 70% in the middle and 50% in the bottom. So bottom's 50-50, middle's 30-70, and top is 100-100. That's how I roll. The only other thing I work with is this differential right here. Differential means that when one control surface goes up 100%, the other one should go down at 100%. But instead of having it go down 100%, 
it goes down 15% less than 100%, so 85%. And you can I would be careful with that. You don't want to give too much, um, take it down too much. But essentially what you're doing here is as that control surface goes down, it doesn't go quite down all the way and provides a little less drag and provides for a smoother turn. Okay, now elevator, I just want to show you, I did pretty much the same thing. You have those same surfaces for both curve uh, expo and rates, which is, yeah, works good. Um, I can also do it with rudder. Rudder might not need as much of that. It depends on what kind of, if you have really large control surfaces and you really hate the feel of over controlled planes, then yeah, but by all means, take the rudder down. Throttle, you can go in here and you can add a throttle cut right here, and you would have to. I did it here, I assigned a switch C to that, and everything looks great. Now, the last thing I'll talk about is your actual um, can mixes, and it's hard to find. A lot of times people miss it. There's a little plus button right there. You switch on that, all of a sudden you get the whole universe of can mixes. And one of the most important ones is called the free mix. And the reason why I say it's important and the reason why it's number one is because I get people who call me all the time and say, dude, I can't figure out how to get my landing gear working. And you don't have a mix for landing gear. Well, you make your own mix by calling it free mix. You just go in here, put it in last position, and then you can say the source, you give it a switch, function type, you give it a curve, it'll go from negative 100 to positive 100 and that's how I'd set up landing gear. Uh, the one I'm going to work with today as opposed to this free mix is aileron rudder. I'm going to hit edit and this one right here I'm going to just simply talk about uh, there's something called adverse yaw which means that well a guy like myself who came out of flying nothing but flying wings um, I get to I'm like I'm Mr. Yank and bank and yank I mean I'll just flip that plane to the uh, left and I'll hold back on the elevator and then the plane's going to turn and the planes are the turns are really sloppy so if you want to have a more coordinated turn what you have to do is you have to make sure that the rudder is going the same direction as the up aileron I'll say it again, the rudder has to go the same direction as the up aileron. And what I did is I gave it a rate of 25%. So that means when that left aileron goes up 100%, that rudder goes the same direction as the up aileron about 25% of the way. And it gives that a nice little gentle turn from the back, is perhaps prevent the adverse yaw. You can dial that up and down between flights to see if it makes it work any better. That's absolutely a wonderful little tool to have. And with all that, uh, there's so much more to talk about with this transmitter, but for now, that's where I'm gonna leave it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Steve at FRSky negative sign RC. Thanks so much.